Hey everybody, Scott Dowell here, back with another thrill-packed episode of Couch to Photoshop. And today we're going to kind of take a little bit of a break from where we've been going with new tools and talk about technique. So one of the problems that we run into quite often at the studio are situations where the light modifiers appear in the shot. Uh, sometimes the light in the proper position means that it's going to show up on the frame of the camera and we need to remove it. And this can fluster people. And I want to talk about how to remove these things. And we're going to use the tools we've already talked about so far. And then we're going to talk about a nightmare situation where we have a backdrop that dominates and has a problem. We don't have enough real sample material to make a better background. So we're going to cover the easy one first. This is the most common scenario and we're going to run into quite often. Okay, so to tackle this one, we're pretty much just going to go to the, the patch tool. We've covered this one already in a previous episode. And we're just basically going to highlight the offending object. And they're just doing a goopy highlight there. And then drag it off to the side and let go. And we should have a relatively good option. Now, this is one way to do it. And it works fine for most situations. In this situation, it's not great. Uh, but there is a better option. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to redraw my marquee uh, with the patch tool. It doesn't really matter. You'll find that the marquee drawing tools here and the patch tools marquee tool all honor each other. So you can use any of those types of selections and then use whatever function you'd like. In this case, we're going to talk about content aware fill. Now there's two ways to get to it. Uh, there's under edit, there's content aware fill here. This is a much more grandiose version than the one we're going to use for this, which is just shift backspace. Shift backspace is the fill dialog and we're going to use this a lot. So I want you to actually use the command, take a moment, open your own document and follow along. Even if you're not removing a background stand, maybe remove a flower or a person's head, whatever you want. But I want you to actually use the tool. So shift backspace is the same on the Mac and on the PC. And there's a couple reasons why I want you to know this dialogue. We're going to use content aware fill quite often. We're also going to use 50% gray quite often. Uh, these other ones also have shortcut keys, so we're not really going to use those options. But this is an important dialogue. And we're just going to hit shift backspace and hit OK. We don't have to change any options or do anything. It's going to come up and do some fancy maths and then come up with an answer that I think you'll be quite happy with. So uh, we get rid of our marquee. By the way, that's a control or command D to deselect. I use that one quite often. You see, this is an amazing job. Uh, so, so that tool is one I use quite often. And we'll use the regular marquee. We'll do the same thing down here. Now we do have to remember to catch the reflection of this as well. And then the leg here. Um, and we can probably just grab the whole thing like this. Shift backspace, hit enter. And it should do a fairly good job. And there we go. It's not perfect, but it did a pretty nice job. So now we can use the patch tool like we normally would go and grab this. Let's kind of grab the rest of the wall here. And there we go. So we got rid of our problem child and we did it in a matter of seconds. Uh, so you can also use the same technique up top here. Now what I did there, <laughs> it was a little fast. Uh, I grabbed the marquee, the square marquee tool and you just drag a marquee. But if you hold on your space bar, you can move it to change where it is. And we're gonna have a whole video on selections, but I guess we're gonna start today because we have to use it. Uh, so what I did is I created a little bit of a selection pushed it into the upper corner, and then continue to drag out. It's easier than trying to go up here and make a selection in, right in the corner. So just pushed it and then pushed it in, brought it all the way across. And again, we can use two tools for this. We can use the patch tool. If we have enough room, we could pull it down and not catch the top of her, her crown or hat that she made. Uh, so we could try it there. And there we go, that works. Let's try the other method. So shift backspace, I just uh, undid control Z a couple times there. So shift backspace and hit enter. And that should work very well. It's thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the only problem with this part is it likes to take its time. And there we go. So that's one way to do it. Now, there are also people who will be out there saying you could use the clone stamp for this. And I'll tell you the clone stamp has a reason for existing and you're gonna see that I don't use it very often. If you're wondering why we haven't covered it yet, it's a tool I just don't use that often. Uh, so for down here, for example, we could use the clone tool to kind of fix some of this, but I'm just as happy using the patch tool and pulling it over here, getting the part of the wall we want and just doing that type of an operation until I'm pleased with the background, something like that. Uh, I can do the same thing with these walls here. We talked about that already in another video where we cleaned up 
uh, some floor in the abandoned Shawshank prison. We can do the same thing here. We just grab the wall and continue kind of sampling around until we highlight all the places that we want to replace and so on. So we can neaten this up very quickly. Same with this transition here of the two boards laying on top of each other. I can just go and grab that transition and then pick a spot and that transition should get rid of. So the patch tool is really my go-to for most of the operations I think that people use a clone stamp for. But uh, in those situations, after you use a clone stamp, you usually have some additional work that you have to do. Uh, so this is fine. Uh, and obviously a lot more work needs to be done here. But you see that we got our major problem, the light stand, removed from the image very quickly. Okay, let's move on to the nightmare scenario. So in this situation, we're dealing with a ballerina here, Jennifer from Chicago. I'll put a link to her Instagram down below as well as Haley's, who's in the first thing here from New York. So uh, what we need to do is we need to fix the paper on this side and we need to extend the background on this side. And that is a much harder situation because Content Aware Phil has problems with this. This shadow area here becomes a real problem for it and you get a bunch of soup and it's very difficult. So first of all, let's remove this side. Uh, so we're going to use the marquee tool and you notice that we have a light, a, a bit of a bright side where the edge of the paper is hitting here and then a dark side. I want to make sure that I get all that. So I'm just going to grab it like this, highlight it, and then I'm going to shift backspace, content fill. And there we go. And then I do the same thing here with this leg here. Just highlight that whole corner, shift backspace. Typically, you want to preserve as much of the original image as possible, so trying to pick as close to the object as you can is handy. Um, but for these situations where we know we're just going to be replacing the background with the texture anyway, I don't care. So I just use the patch tool there to replace that little dot that was driving me nuts. A little bit of sensor dust here too. Okay, so how do we get rid of this? And this is a much harder situation. Now, the thing about Photoshop, and you'll hear it a, th a thousand times, is that there's 800 ways to do the same thing, and there are. There's a lot of ways you can do this. You could take the clone stamp and start trying to clone this over. You get all kinds of strange things. So one of my favorite ways to do it is to simply stretch the canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the background, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm just going to take and um, I'm going to draw kind of a line here, a subjective line around Jennifer, something like this. I'm going to delete everything on this side. So what, I am, what I'm ending up with is something that looks like this. The reason I do this is because when I start stretching things, I don't want to forget which arm is the right arm and end up with this weird shadow thing. Uh, so for what I'm doing here, this is fine. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. I'm using my, um, my wheel on my mouse. Control T. This is free transform. And we talked about all these transform tools and where to get them, but um, I never go into the menu. So just free transform this way. And I'm doing is I'm just going to pull on this, like this. And I'm just going to kind of scooch it over a bit, pull a little bit more, until I get something that looks kind of like this. I'm going to hit Enter. I'm going to put a mask on this. B for brush. I'm going to go back with a black brush. And I'm just going to mask. I'm just going to get rid of the transition to the mask here just a little bit to kind of help it look a little bit more natural. There we go. So this is not perfect, but now we can use our regular tools. One of the gotchas here, though, is you want to make sure you bring up your crop tool. And we have a lot of junk off to the side here. So if I go to delete cropped pixels and hit enter, it will get rid of all this stuff over here that's taking up space. So we see we have a, a rather large document. And I know I'm not going to use that stuff, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. And there we go. So now I can go and I can use my patch tool on any little problems that remain. Uh, I do want to make sure, though, that, uh, so remember, this is still our separate layer. This is what it looked like. I do want to kind of bind it to this other one in the background. Now, we've talked about merging down, which is Control-E, where it goes and makes this all one document. And in this case, I'd probably do that because I know that I didn't interfere with her, and this is acceptable and something I would continue to work on. I do want to share with you one command today you're going to use a lot, and it's an odd one because there's no menu for it. It's Control-Alt-Shift-E. E or Command Alt Shift E, I believe, on the Mac, and they call it the the Vulcan mind grip, right? So <laughs> you're just going to Control Alt Shift in E, and what it was, what it's going to do is take all of the layers that are visible and create a stamp of all that you see. So it's clone stamp visible, and you're going to use this command a lot. But uh, so this allows us to create more or less a check layer. So now we can work on it as if we flatten the document, but we still have the underlying pieces here 
below this. Now we can't see them obviously because this layer covers everything, but if later on we're very happy with what we've done, we can go ahead and get rid of everything under the clone stamp layer and be happy. So I would then take my patch tool and go and find these little bits of sensor dust or whatever is on the background that I need to remove. Okay, so I always go and uh, pretty much add a texture to my backgrounds because I'm not a fan of the gray. Uh, there's a couple reasons why. First of all, I think it looks incomplete, like there's more to the story that could be told. And second of all, I feel that this is a really great opportunity for banding to creep up. And banding is basically where we have not enough crayons in the box. We have a shade of gray, and then we have another shade of gray, and there's no shade of gray that exists between those two. You'll get a line. And people are like, well, you just blur it. But blurring it doesn't do anything. In fact, it makes that line sharper usually. It makes the banding worse. So adding a texture or adding noise, which breaks up that variation, really helps handle the banding. And it's the only way to handle banding, really. So I avoid the entire problem by simply adding a texture over the image, and they don't have to worry about it. Plus, it looks a lot more complete. So uh, we're going to cover that in another video, but I want to show you. We're going to go from uh, next video. We're going to go from this one of Jennifer again. Uh, to this one and it's using the same canvas expansion technique we just talked about but we're going to be creating it from nothing and we're going to be adding some butterflies we're going to be doing some color correction and then uh, showing you basically how to start this composite and then texture bending which is where I added the background but I bent the texture there's a few videos that need to be done in order to give you the skill set to go ahead and do this and we're a third of the way there because canvas expansion was probably the first one on my list because if you notice from the first image here, we have the torn paper at the bottom and on the edge. We need to handle those as well as a bit of sensor noise here and there, or sensor dust here and there. So until next time, I want you to take some time and go back to your old images where you have a light stand or something that needs to be removed, and maybe expanding the canvas a bit and practice these techniques because they are lifesavers. And in situations like you have in my studio where a light, a light stand or a modifier is in just about every shot, this is really the only way to handle it because Lightroom or Capture One simply can't do those things. And that's where you start to differentiate yourself as a photographer is when you're producing artwork that everyone else just can't do. I know this may seem simple, and it's one of those problems that people have run into and ask me, how do you get rid of these problems? How do you get rid of those light stands? I thought I would make this video to kind of make that clear. So give it a practice, and I'll catch you next time.